And I gotta be honest, I don't wanna see this. I can't believe that there's any new spin that they could possibly put on this. But who killed WCW, the new docu-series that's being produced by Dwayne Johnson's Seven Bucks Productions, now has an official premiere date June 4th on Vice TV. That's according to Deadline yesterday, said Johnson about the series, which was first announced last November, quote, the iconic rise and fall of WCW is one of professional wrestling's most captivating stories full of big dreams, massive successes, painful failures, and the harsh realities of the pro wrestling business. With wrestling viewership and fan engagement at an ultimate high, he didn't say all-time high, he said ultimate high, there has never been more of a perfect time to tell top quality wrestling stories, and there's no one better, or no better one to start with than a one-of-a-kind behind-the-scenes look at this epic saga. I would disagree about that for two reasons. One, it's always a good time to tell a top-notch wrestling story, and two... I don't know if this is, would be the one I would want to start with, but I do understand that WCW is still out there to be mocked, to be ridiculed, to be celebrated. It just won't go away. You lived it, especially in those final years. What do you think about another documentary being made on WCW? And is there anything that they could possibly add that would make this thing you know, something that a wrestling fan that would be listening to this show would actually want to go out of their way to see? I can't imagine there's any new ground to cover. But I, I think with Rock's uh, ties now to TKO, they want to tell a story that WWE gets a win in. And this is the most told story. I saw it on Threads because I'm no longer on the X at Storm Wrestling Academy on Threads, if you care. Ah. Uh, I saw it announced and I joked that who killed WCW? It's it's the Agatha Christie's murder on the Orient Express finish. It's like everyone did. From creative control Hulk Hogan and Kevin Nash to Eric Bischoff's arrogance, if you will, or giving people creative control in the first place, to the sabotaging of Sting, to Vince Russo's booking, Kevin Nash's booking, and ultimately getting to the point where I think it was Jamie Kellner pulled the plug I think there is guilt to be shared all around, and I'm sure a gloating WWE taking the victory lap at the end of the show. But will guilt be placed all around, or will it just be a bunch of poo thrown at a fan where everybody gets to kind of like mush it in each other's faces? Because, you know, one of the reasons that this will have a bunch of talking heads on it is because there's a lot of talking heads that are still in the business of talking who were there and have their thoughts about it. And again, it, it, I don't know. It just seems like WWE has ran this victory lap on WCW a zillion times already, a zillion times already. And I don't know. I, I just see this to be kind of a complete waste of time until we can get a tease where we may get something different or we may get a surprise. I mean, is there anybody that they can talk to that you know of that may have, like, could they pull out, like, was it Sharon Sadello or something like that? I mean, who would they have to get to, to for somebody like you to actually perk up a little bit and go, okay, I want to hear what this is because I'm sure you've already heard everything Bischoff has to say and Nash has to say and everybody else has to say about it. Who knew can come in that you can think of that may be somebody that we would want to hear from? I don't see that there is someone, and I think the other um, crux or difficulty hurdle they have to get over is, how do you tell this story without glorifying Vince McMahon? And that's not exactly a good thing to be doing right now. No, no it is not. <laughs> and that's going to be interesting to see how they play him in all of this, if it's just wwe went out and bought them and all that sort of stuff and it's not directly a shot at Vi I, I don't know it's going to be interesting because yeah now that rock is a member of the tko board of directors again how much vince erasure can you do because i'm sure they're going to want to moving forward but i don't again it's so difficult because he's so associated with the product that he helped create and bring to the level that it is on top of the fact that he's in so much of it including that fateful day where he fired jeff jared on air and all that stuff that took place on i believe it was what march 26 right something like that but yeah just the fact that the austin 
McMahon program is such a key role in overtaking WCW and killing WCW, if you will. How do you not mention that and glorify someone who should not be painted in a favorable light on your television? Well, if AEW is Pepsi, and, well, we know Tony, Tony Khan said that WWE was, uh, <laughs> you know, that's a terrible transition. I'm not going to go any further with that transition. I will just say that AEW Dynamite, apparently Pepsi, will take place tonight at T on TBS from the Canada Life Center in Winnipeg, Manitoba. This is, of course, the fallout of the fallout of the fallout from last week's Dynamite, where Tony Khan was attacked by the New Look Elite uh, crew of the Young Bucks and... Jack Perry and Kazuchika Okada, we saw him all weekend long. Those of us who are American football fans, we saw him rock the neck brace. We saw him on there and pretty much got a good reaction for it in all the circles that I saw when he was out there doing media. Everybody had some fun with it. Rich Eisen, apparently, and, and Tony Khan are going to auction off the autographed neck brace with the proceeds going to charity, which is a really cool thing to do there. But I don't think we've gotten your reaction to all that craziness that took place, including his comments on the NFL Network that took, uh, took place on Friday, I believe that it was, where he made that comparison. Do you have any thoughts about anything that uh, does not have to do with in the ring when it comes to Tony Khan's comments over the weekend? I was really happy he wore the neck brace and jumped all in. I think it was smart. It made people talk about it. And also, as an old school wrestling guy like me, it's like, you should. Damn right. Now, if it leads to heel authority figures, I'm not happy with it. And I'll be really curious tonight that two of the people with the most heat in AEW right now are Don Callis and Chris Jericho, and they're in their hometown tonight in Winnipeg, Manitoba. They are indeed. And CM Punk's another guy who seems to be really over, but he he doesn't work there, and they can't really say his name anyway. But he has been, you know, the tipping point in everything that's taken place, and I wouldn't believe that you even have to say CM Punk's name again or ever allude to him again now that you're on the path that you are on. But the thing that stuck out to me was... Kenny Omega has not been around. He has now been announced for the show. And this whole storyline does not make a whole lot of sense in that Tony Khan was sitting there like a like a dummy, you know, where, you know, what was it, uh, Willie Tyler and Lester, for those who are really old, you know, where he's just sitting there like a mannequin being told what to do by the Young Bucks, roll this tape, Tony, and all that sort of stuff. He has a guy that he he had to suspend because he was going to bring down the company with Jack Perry, and then he hugs him. None of this really actually makes any sense, and then we get to him getting dropped on his head. A lot of this with Kenny Omega being fired out of the Elite and him appearing tonight seems to be that, at least to me, they're not going to go in the direction of having a, a heel authority figure it will be the opposite, where Kenny Omega now actually has to step up and do the executive vice president job that he doesn't want to do. At least he talked about, uh, said he was a terrible EVP uh, when he was talking about the punk situation in one of his uh, gaming chats that he had. But it seems like it would be the perfect time for him to come back and be that figure and be the vice president who tries to offset his other guys who are vice presidents just because he's not going to be around for a while. And I think you could use his star power. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.